A VTOL aircraft is one that can take off and land vertically without relying on a runway. This classification can include a variety of types of aircraft, including thrust vectoring fixed wing aircraft, as well as helicopters and other hybrid aircraft with powered rotors such as cyclogyros and gyrodynes. Some lighter than air aircraft also qualify as VTOL aircraft as they can hover, take off and land with vertical approach and departure profiles. Besides helicopters, there are currently two types of VTOL aircraft in military service, the tilt rotor aircraft such as the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey, and thrust vectoring airplanes such as the Harrier family and new F-35B Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter. The idea of vertical flight has been around for thousands of years, and sketches for an aerial screw helicopter show up in Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbook. Manned VTOL aircraft, in the form of primitive helicopters, first flew in 1907, but would take until after World War II to be perfected. The Curtis Wright VZ-7 was a quadrotor helicopter aircraft designed by the Curtis Wright Company for the U.S. Army. The aircraft performed well during tests, but, not being able to meet the Army's standards, was retired and returned to the manufacturer in 1960. The Piasecki VZ-8 Air Jeep was a prototype aircraft developed by Piasecki Aircraft. The Air Jeep was developed to fulfill the U.S. Army Transportation Research Command contract for a flying Jeep in 1957. The flying Jeep was envisioned to be smaller and easier to fly than a helicopter. While the air jeep would normally operate close to the ground, it was capable of flying to several thousand feet, proving to be stable in flight. Flying low allowed it to evade detection by radar. Despite these qualities, the army decided that the flying jeep concept was unsuitable for the modern battlefield and concentrated on the development of conventional helicopters instead. The Ryan XV-5 Vertifan was a jet-powered experimental aircraft in the 1960s, lift fans in the wings and a smaller fan in the nose, powered by engine exhaust gas, were used for vertical takeoff and landing. Aircraft performance was subsonic, with delta wings. The Vertifan had an unusual intake position above the two-seat side-by-side seating cockpit and a T-tail. The XV-5A was finished in army green and the XV-5B was painted in white NASA colors. The fans did not generate as much thrust as was hoped, and the vertical horizontal flight transition was difficult and abrupt. The XV-5 would be one of the last crewed aircraft designed and built by Ryan, which mainly manufactured drones after the mid-1960s. It successfully proved the concept of duct lift fans, but the project was canceled after multiple fatal crashes unrelated to the lift system. The Ling Timco Vought XC-142 was a tilt-wing experimental aircraft designed to investigate the operational suitability of vertical or short takeoff and landing. It first flew conventionally on September 29, 1964 but its service sponsors pulled out of the program and it eventually ended due to a lack of interest after demonstrating its capabilities successfully. The Curtis Wright X-19 was an American experimental tilt-rotor aircraft of the early 1960s. It utilized specially designed radial lift propellers, rather than helicopter-like rotors, for vertical takeoff and augmenting the lift provided by the wing structures. On August 25th, 1965, the first Curtis Wright X-19A prototype was destroyed in a crash at the FAA's National Aviation Facilities Experimental Center. When the gearbox failed followed by loss of the propellers, the test pilot and co-pilot ejected as the now ballistic airframe rolled inverted at 390 feet. The chutes fully deployed in two seconds at 230 feet, and the elapsed time between prop separation and ejection was 2.5 seconds. The X-19 was noteworthy for being the last aircraft of any kind manufactured by Curtis Wright. The VJ-101 was an experimental West German jet fighter tilt jet aircraft. VJ stood for Versichtjager, German 4 experimental fighter. A pair of prototype aircraft, collectively known as the VJ-101C and individually known as the X-1 and X-2, were constructed and participated in a five-year test program. The intention was for the VJ-101 to eventually be developed as the basis for a successor for the German Air Force's inventory of American Lockheed F-104 Starfighter interceptors. 
the 101 was one of the first designs to have the potential for eventual Mach 2 flight. On April 10, 1963, the X-1 made its first hovering flight, and then on the September 20th, 1963, the first transition from hovering flight to horizontal flight took place. The X-1 was first publicly exhibited at the May 1964 Hanover Air Show. The VJ-101C X-1 flew a total of 40 aerodynamic flights, 24 hover flights, and 14 full transitions. In the course of these tests, the sound barrier was broken for the first time by a vertical takeoff aircraft. The Ryan X-13 VertiJet was an experimental tail-sitting vertical takeoff and landing jet aircraft built by Ryan Aeronautical and flown in the United States in the 1950s. The main objective of the project was to demonstrate the ability of a pure jet to vertically take off, hover, transition to horizontal forward flight, and vertically land. Named after a bird of prey, the Harrier, and formerly referred to as the Harrier Jump Jet, is a family of jet-powered attack aircraft capable of vertical or short takeoff and landing operations. It emerged as the only truly successful design of the many attempted during that era. The Harrier was conceived to operate from improvised bases, such as car parks or forest clearings, without requiring large and vulnerable air bases. Later, the design was adapted for use from aircraft carriers. There are two generations and four main variants of the Harrier family, developed by both UK and US manufacturers. Though capable of taking off vertically, can do so only at less than its maximum loaded weight. In most cases, a short takeoff is needed to lift the required amount of fuel and weapons needed for a training sortie, using forward speed to supplement the jet lift with aerodynamic lift. A short takeoff also uses less fuel than a vertical takeoff. Landings are not usually done in a conventional manner because the range of speeds at which this is advisable is narrow due to the relatively vulnerable outrigger undercarriage. Operationally, a near vertical landing with some forward speed is preferred. Most Harrier fleets have been replaced with the style variant of the F-35 Lightning II, designated as the F-35B. The Bell Aerosystems Lunar Landing Research Vehicle, nicknamed the Flying Bedstead, was a Project Apollo era program to build a simulator for the moon landings. The LLRVs were used to study and analyze piloting techniques needed to fly and land the Apollo Lunar Module in the moon's low gravity environment. The research vehicles were vertical takeoff vehicles that used a single jet engine mounted on a gimbal so that it always pointed vertically. It was adjusted to cancel five-sixths of the vehicle's weight, and the vehicle used hydrogen peroxide rockets which could fairly accurately simulate the behavior of a lunar lander. On May 6, 1968, Neil Armstrong was forced to use the LLRV-1's ejection seat from about 200 feet altitude after a control problem, and had about four seconds on his full parachute before landing on the ground unhurt. The future of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is promising thanks to new technologies such as electric propulsion, advanced avionics, navigation, and automated operations. These EVTOL vehicles combine the speed and convenience of helicopters with the electric power of drones, offering the potential for sustainable carbon-free aviation. Hey Doc, you better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads.